LWO on WeatherNet. Uh, liftoff conditions looking pretty good. ESTS is ready for launch. Ignition. Liftoff. Falcon 9 has cleared the tower. Ten. Nine. Eight. Side booster ignition. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Hello, everyone, and good evening. It's Saturday, December 18th, and you're watching the live webcast for the Turksat 5B mission for our customer Airbus. My name is Ian McCullough, and I'm a sales manager here at SpaceX, joining you from our headquarters here in Hawthorne, California. Just 15 hours ago, we successfully launched 52 satellites from Space Launch Complex 4 East at Vandenberg Space Force Base, and we're back again joining you all for the launch of Turksat 5B. Turksat 5B is a communications satellite that was designed and manufactured by our customer Airbus. The satellite will provide, provide broadband internet services to Turkey and various other parts of the world. We're having a busy few days as we are also gearing up to support the CRS-24 cargo resupply mission to the International Space Station on Tuesday, December 21st at 5.06 a.m. Eastern Time. Before we, move, we explore more into today's payload, let's take a closer look at the Falcon 9 vehicle supporting to today's mission. On your screen is a live view of Falcon 9 awaiting its 10.58 p.m. Eastern Time launch from Space Launch Complex 40 from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida. Falcon 9 is our two-stage liquid-fueled launch vehicle and stands 230 feet or 70 meters tall, which is greater than the, the wingspan of a 747 aircraft. The bottom two-thirds of the vehicle is the first stage. Most recently, we successfully launched a reflown booster for a record-breaking 11th time during the Starlink mission earlier today. As you can, re you can tell from the re-entry soot, it's pretty easy to spot a flight-proven booster. Tonight will be the third flight for this particular first stage. It previously supported NASA's CRS-22 mission in, early, in June earlier this year, and Crew-3 only last month. At the bottom of the first stage, there are nine Merlin engines that will get the F-9 off the ground and up to the thinner parts of the Earth's atmosphere before separating from the second stage and making its way back down to Earth for landing. And it's part of the rocket that we will attempt to recover for a third time on our drone ship, a shortfall of Gravitas. About two and a half minutes into flight, the first, stage, first and second stage will separate, and the second stage will ignite its single MBAC engine to carry the Turksat 5B spacecraft into a geostationary transfer orbit. The Turksat 5B satellite is currently safely enclosed inside the 17-foot diameter payload fairing, which is the structure at the very top of the rocket you see on your screen. This protects the satellites from aerodynamic heating, loads, and contamination during ascent. Once we, reach the, once we reach the vacuum of space, we will jettison the fairing halves while the second stage continues onto orbit. The fairing halves we are using today are flying to space for the second time, both having support, previously supported the GPS-3 Space Vehicle 5 mission in June earlier this year. And we will be attempting to recover them today using our recovery ship, Bob. Good evening, I'm John Innsbrucker, Falcon Principal Integration Engineer, joining you from the webcast desk in Hawthorne, California. The launch and satellite vehicle teams are ready for launch as we approach T minus 12 minutes to liftoff. Falcon 9 team was on console and received their countdown briefing at T minus two hours. Final vehicle checks began at the flight termination system and the Merlin engines on both the first and second stages. And most recently, we completed the pull to proceed with propellant load and launch. This was at T minus 38 minutes and all seven members of the launch crew were go. Our team began loading propellant on time at T minus 35 minutes. Falcon 9's first and second stages use the same two propellants. One propellant is fuel, the second propellant is an oxidizer. So Falcon 9's fuel is RP1, a refined form of kerosene. Now to burn the fuel, we need an oxidizer. In the lower portion of the Earth's atmosphere, oxygen makes up about 21% of the air that you breathe. So most fires never need to worry about supplying an oxidizer it's supplied by the oxygen in the air. However, there is no atmosphere in space to provide oxygen molecules, so rockets need to carry their own. And our oxidizer is super chilled liquid oxygen called densified LOX. The liquid oxygen is chilled well below its boiling point and that increases its density, 
allowing us to load more into the first and second stage LOX tanks. Now Falcon 9 carries over 1.1 million pounds of propellant at liftoff, you can see here on the screen. And we burn off most of it in the first eight and a half minutes. Now all of that propellant goes through the nine engines on the first stage and the single engine on the second stage. Now later in flight on the second stage video, you may notice the nozzle of the second stage engine is larger than those on the first stage engines. That's because the second stage engine only operates in the vacuum of space. All the first stage engines have to operate from sea level up to vacuum. So in the vacuum of space, a large nozzle allows the pressure of the Merlin engine to fully expand so that it matches that vacuum pressure when it leaves the nozzle. Now if we tried to use that large nozzle on the first stage engines, it would be very inefficient until the last seconds of first stage flight when we do finally get to the vacuum of outer space. So we use a smaller nozzle on first stage engines and that's a much better match for flying through the Earth's atmosphere on the way to space. Now on the weather front at Cape Canaveral, we started with a 10% probability of violating launch weather requirements. We've been watching some showers on both sides of the uh, launch complex, but nothing right now looks like it's going to interfere with launch. So we don't expect any weather holds as we continue the countdown. The weather conditions are also looking good for booster landing on our drone ship and for fairing recovery. So with that, the launch vehicle, the satellite, the weather and the range are all good to go for a 10.58 p.m. Eastern time liftoff from Space Launch Complex 40. As I mentioned earlier, the TurkSat 5B is a communication satellite that will provide broadband internet services and will be the most powerful of the TurkSat satellite fleet. The TurkSat 5B communication satellite will operate in KU and KA bands at the 42 degrees east longitude slot in geostationary orbit in order to pr provide service in a wide range of areas covering the Middle East, the Persian Gulf, the Red Sea, the Mediterranean, Nigeria, various parts of Africa, and its immediate neighbors. TurkSat 5B has high data transmission capacity in the KA band and is, has a designed service life of over 35 years. Now, let's take a moment to learn more about what makes this communication satellite unique.
T minus four minutes, 40 seconds and counting. And shortly, the transport erector will retract the strong back to the pre-launch position. That's about two degrees from the rocket. What we're waiting right now is to see the clamp arms open around the second stage, and that'll be followed by the hydraulic strong movement. Strong retract has started. Okay, we've heard the call out there. The strong back retract has started. Seeing a lot of condensation as we're uh, boiling off, uh, uh, or we're actually uh, have the cold second stage liquid oxygen meeting that warm Florida air. But we probably can see the arms start to open. And then once the arms are open, the strong back will move about two degrees away. And then once we're at launch, ground hydraulics will move the strong back to a position about 45 degrees away. Now first stage fuel loading is complete. We're currently waiting for first stage liquid oxygen loading to complete at about T minus three minutes. Second stage will complete a minute after that. Now one minute before liftoff, you're gonna hear the announcement Falcon 9 is in startup. Now this announcement means the rocket's first and second stage computers are now controlling the launch countdown on the Falcon 9. Now at about T minus two seconds, we'll light the nine engines on the first stage. Once the engines are confirmed to be at full power, the flight computer on the second stage will command the ground hold downs to release the rocket right at T zero. Stage one, lock load complete. We've heard the call out. Stage one, lock load is complete. We're on time, coming up at T minus three minutes and counting. Now the satellite team is continuing to monitor the status and health of the Turksat 5B payload located inside the fairing on top of the second stage. And all the systems are go on the satellite. And the satellite did switch from ground power to its internal batteries at T minus 16 minutes. Coming up on T minus two and a half minutes shortly. Everything continues to look good. We're still loading liquid oxygen on the second stage. Now currently the range is green, the air and sea space, as well as the area around Complex 40, they're clear for launch. And on a weather front, uh, as we talked a few minutes ago, uh, the good news is we don't have any weather uh, that looks like it's gonna hold us, but if we did have a weather rule violated, we uh, cannot stop and try to launch later. But the good news is the weather looks good for launch. Now if for some reason we have to call a hold on today's launch, we have a backup opportunity scheduled tomorrow at the same time. All right, now we're waiting to hear the call out for stage two lock load complete. Stage two lock load complete. There we are. So we've closed out propellant loading on all stages. We're getting ready to begin what we call uh, blowing down or purging the liquid oxygen propellants out of the strong back that we're going up to the second stage. And then we'll be venting down pressure in yeah, the strong back. Started. And you can see there's a stream of white vapor coming off of the strong back. That's normal. That's just the uh, excess pressure in the ground side being vented out. And it's meeting that warm, humid Florida air. And you get that white condensation. Next event coming in 10 seconds is gonna be startup. We'll also begin pressurizing the first and second stages for launch. Falcon is in startup. We've gone to startup. Flight computers on both stages are now running the Falcon 9 countdown. Next event, launch directors go. LD, go for launch. You heard it, launch director's given the go. Everything continues to look good. T minus 36 seconds and counting. All systems are go for the launch of Falcon 9 with Turksat 5B. T minus 30 seconds. T minus 15 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Ignition. And lift off. Pitching down range. Take one chamber pressure's nominal.
T plus 40 seconds, Falcon 9 has successfully lifted off from Slick 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station, carrying the Turksat 5B satellite to geosynchronous transfer orbit. We've throttled down in preparation for maximum dynamic pressure. We're in the throttle bucket. Good views from the SpaceX ground cameras following the first day. Falcon is supersonic. We've gone supersonic. The Merlin engines are back up to full power. Max Q. And we're through the period of maximum dynamic pressure. Everything continues to look good. Trajectory is nominal. Avionics report systems are nominal. One hundred seconds into flight coming up in just under a minute. We're going to have main engine cutoff where we shut off the nine Merlin 1D engines. We'll separate the stages. And then the second stage engine will ignite at about the two minute and 44 second mark. MVAC is chilling in. The MVAC D engine chill in call out. We've begun putting a little bit of liquid oxygen through the turbo pump to get it cold in preparation for second stage ignition. That's coming up in just about 34 seconds from now. First stage is coming up on 4G's acceleration and we're gonna begin throttling down to hold 4G's. Getting ready for main engine cutoff. First stage engine cutoff. Stage separation confirmed. MVAC ignition. We've got successful stage separation. The second stage now under power of the single Merlin vacuum engine. We'll be coming up on fairing deploy in a little under 30 seconds. Views of the titanium grid fins beginning to deploy on the left as we see the lights of Florida in the background as we head east, due east from the Cape into our transfer orbit parking orbit. We're getting ready for the camera on second stage to switch forward to look at the spacecraft and the payload fairing for fairing deploy. Fairing separation confirmed. And there you see the two fairing halves have separated, falling away from the vehicle. We're now exposing the Turksat 5B satellite to outer space. As a reminder, we will be attempting to retrieve these two fairing halves with the help of our recovery vessel, Bob. Now, as mentioned previously, these two fairing halves supported the GPS-3 Space Vehicle 5 mission in June of this year. But right now, we're at T plus four minutes and counting. Everything continues to go well for the Falcon 9 mission, carrying Turksat 5B into the parking orbit. As John mentioned, it's T plus four minutes and now 20 seconds into today's mission. We're currently in the first of two planned MVAC burns for satellite deployment. At T plus six minutes and 27 seconds, you should see on your screen the first stage is entry burn, which a burn that lasts 24 seconds. For the entry burn, we relight the center engine E9, and then partway through, we relight E1 and E5 engines. So we have a total of three M1D engines helping to slow down the vehicle as it passes through the Earth's atmosphere. Uh, you'll see this exhaust start as a circular plume at the bottom from the single engine, then shape into a longer, narrower plume when the two other two engines ignite. Reusability is a key to lowering the cost of spaceflight, which enables more Which investments in critical scientific research. The Falcon 9, that first stage that is supporting today's mission, will perform this entry burn for the third time, having previously supported both the CRS-22 resupply flight to the ISS and the Crew-3 launch just last month. Great view on the right-hand side of the MVAC nozzle. Um, 
The Merlins on the first stage are, with their short nozzles, are optimized for sea level. These achieve around 190,000 pounds of thrust during ascent and descent, while the MVAC engine with its extended nozzle is optimized for 220,000 pounds of thrust in vacuum. Now we're about 45 seconds away from the entry burn on the first stage. If you're just joining us, we had a successful launch from Slick 40 at Cape Canaveral, and we're currently watching the second stage on the right-hand side of your screen enter orbit with the left-hand left side of your screen. The first stage is heading back to our drone ship in the Atlantic, a shortfall of gravitas. Let's watch out for that landing, that entry burn begin in just a moment. Stage one, FTS is saved. Stage one, entry startup. Really bright from that entry burn start. Stage one, entry burn shutdown. And there it looks like we've had a successful entry burn shutdown. Um, if you noticed on the launch pad, the, the Falcon 9, um, not when normal. the Falcon 9 makes its way back to Earth, you may notice some different soot markings on the outer side, or the outer edges of the rocket. If you ever wondered how those soot markings are formed, it's because the soot is generated when the carbon-based rocket-grade kerosene RP-1 burns. Since re-entry occurs engines first, the booster flies through its own plume, which deposits the soot on the rocket, and you can see some of those sparks and soot flying up at the camera there on the left-hand side. Terminal guidance. Again, as a quick recap, we had a successful liftoff at 10.58 p.m. from Slick 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida. A successful separation of the first and second stages. Uh, the first stage, stage is on its way back to our drone ship, a, a, uh, a shortfall of Gravitas in the Atlantic stage Ocean. Stage two, FTS is saved. And the second stage is heading to its initial orbital insertion with the TurkSat 5B satellite. We're coming up on a couple events, Seco 1 and Landing Burn. And back engine cutoff. Stage one, landing burn. Got a successful second engine cutoff, and nominal orbit the landing burn has just started. And we just heard good orbit. Confirmed a nominal orbital insertion. We're now Stage waiting on our Falcon to deployed. land on drone ship, a shortfall of Gravitas. Stage one landing confirmed. And there you have it. That's SpaceX's 99th successful booster landing, as well as SpaceX's 78th mission flying a refill and booster. Our mission isn't over just yet. The second stage is now embarking on its coast phase between the first and second burns of the MBAC D engine. After the coast phase, we will light the MBAC engine for a second time, a little bit after T plus 26 minutes. Expect the blast signal, Cape. We'll see you back here in about 20 minutes at T plus 26 minutes. In the meantime, enjoy some space tunes.
Welcome back to the webcast of the Falcon 9 mission carrying the Turksat 5B satellite designed and developed by Airbus. We're coming up on the second burn of the upper stage engine in just under 30 seconds. Now to recap what's happened so far this evening, we had a smooth liftoff at 10.58 p.m. Eastern time. Two and a half minutes later, our first and second stages successfully separated. The first stage, which made its third flight today, landed on our drone ship, a shortfall of Gravitas. Now the second stage completed its first burn, and that successfully inserted today's payload and second stage into the parking orbit you see on your screen right now. We're getting ready to relight the second stage engine to put us into the geotransfer orbit. And back restart ignition. We've got ignition of the second stage engine. We're up on power. Now at this point, the second stage will burn for about one minute before shutting down for the second time. This shutdown event is called SECO2, which stands for second stage engine cutoff number two. And this burn will place the Turksat 5B satellite into the required orbit prior to separating it from the Falcon 9. Now, as you can see during this burn, we're gonna add about 2,700 meters per second, almost 6,000 miles per hour, to the speed of the Falcon 9 second stage. And that's gonna take us well in excess of the, F, the standard geo orbit of 35,000 kilometers. We're hearing tank pressure's looking good. Engine performance looks nominal. And we've Heard. We've got shutdown of the second stage engine. You saw it briefly there on the screen. And in the background, we heard nominal orbit insertion. So that's the good orbit call out that we always like to hear. So as a reminder, for those tuning in, the Turksat 5B satellite is still attached to Falcon 9's second stage. And you can just see it a little bit there. We're getting into sunrise as we're coming up over Gabon, or er, leaving the Gabon ground station, coming up over Heart of Beestock in Africa. So right now we're gonna wait a few more minutes for the satellite in the second stage to get closer to the final destination. So we're gonna pause the commentary during the second coast phase, but we'll come back just before stage two separation takes place. We'll be back at about T plus 33 minutes and 30 seconds, about a minute before separation. And until then, as Ian says, enjoy the space tunes and we'll see you back here.
Take care. Acquisition signal, Mauritius. Welcome back to our launch coverage of the TurkSat 5B mission. If you're just joining us, we have just one more major milestone coming, uh, coming up to complete today's mission, which of course is the deployment of the TurkSat 5B satellite from Falcon 9 second stage, which is scheduled to take place in about a minute. Prior to reaching this upcoming milestone, we had an on-time launch at 10.58 p.m. Eastern Time, followed by a successful ascent, separation, first stage landing, and two second stage engine burns. As previously mentioned, the TurkSat 5B satellite was designed by our customer Airbus to provide broadband internet services to areas such as the Middle East, the Persian Gulf, the Red Sea, the Mediterranean, Nigeria, various parts of Africa, and its immediate neighbors in addition to Turkey. TurkSat 5B will be the most powerful of the, 30, the TurkSat satellite fleet and has, has a designed service life of over 35 years. Now, in any moment, we'll witness the satellite's deployment from our Falcon 9's second stage. Get a good view right here. Payload separation confirmed. And there you have it. We've received a successful separation of the TurkSat 5B satellite from the Falcon 9 second stage, which now brings today's webcast coverage to a close. Expected losses. Signal. Thank you to Airbus for entrusting the, us with the TurkSat 5B satellite. A big thank you to the Range and the Federal Aviation Administration. We really appreciate having your support for today's mission. It's been an exciting day here at SpaceX, having supported two missions within roughly 18-hour time frame. But as we mentioned before, it doesn't end there. 
Be sure to, to be sure to join us for the next cargo resupply mission to the International Space Station with the CRS-24 mission, currently targeted for Tuesday, December 21st at 5.06 a.m. Eastern Time. And to all our viewers, thanks for joining us, and we'll see you again very soon.